Hey there, and welcome to Into the Terminal, episode 62. Today, we're going to be talking about configuring sudo access. I'm Eric, the IT Guy Hendricks, and joining me is my king of the critical path, Mr. Scott McBrien. Good day, Eric. All right, so we have started on our security theme, a uh, story arc of episodes. Um, and so we covered uh, CVE mitigation in a previous episode. Last week, we covered uh, applying security policies and scanning your system with the OpenSCAP utility for judging compliance. But for the next couple episodes, I think we're going to take a look at some of the common things that you see across different security policies and how one might adjust your system to comply with it. And so um, our theme today is limiting administrative access to the machine. So uh, a whole bunch of different security policies, DISSTIG, PCI, uh, HIPAA, and probably a few others talk about the need to have a method to constrain what users can do for administrative tasks, as well as auditing what users have done with administrative rights. And the most common way to comply with this is to implement sudo. So Eric, what is, uh, what's sudo? So sudo is a way to, <clears throat> uh, to basically run a command as another user. In fact, uh, essentially sudo is switch user do. So su do, um, and then we just call it sudo for short. Yeah, and usually it's the uh, switch user to become root to do something. That's not what it can only be used for, but that's probably its most common use. And so when you think about uh, the administrative tasks that one does, like installing software or applying updates or adding users, uh, those are all things that root can do. And normal people cannot do those things. Um, and so sudo allows you to allow people to do those administrative tasks and we're going to take a look at a lot more depth into like how we configure it and what options are and some examples. Uh, but for our critical path, we're going to allow uh, one of our users named Jim to be able to do stuff as root. And we're going to allow Jim to do all the things as root. So you can see that here we have our regular user, Jim. Thank you, Eric, um, who is a unprivileged user. And if he was to try and do something like uh, update the machine today, he would be refused, right? Because normal people can't install software on a machine. So one of the built-in mechanisms for allowing people additional access uh, is a special group that's already defined on Red Hat Enterprise Linux to allow someone to do things as root. And if you are a member of the wheel group, which is already defined on your box, um, by adding someone to the wheel group like Jim, we're allowing them to be a root equivalent user. All right, so thank you again, Eric. So he belongs to group wheel. And now we can use the sudo command like uh, sudo dnf update. And what are we? Yep, we have to put in Jim's password. We didn't give Jim uh, so the password. <laughs> oh, no. All right, well, let's fix that. <clears throat> All right, so we put in Jim's password to prove that we are Jim so that we can then take advantage of this additional uh, escalation. If you hit yes, we're off to the races, downloading and applying packages. Oh, you hit no. Oh, you want to you want to update the box live on the air? All right. Well, let's do something silly like Vim. Okay. All right, we can do that. Oh no, no! I'm talking about uh, an update to them. Oh, okay. Man, we are we are not <laughs> in sync this morning. Yeah. So we don't have to apply all the updates. We'll just apply these, right? And normally Jim wouldn't be able to do this because he's a regular person. But thanks to sudo and the rule that allows the wheel group to be root equivalent, Jim is permitted to do this task. Uh, so, Eric, if we pull up the sudoers file, I bet we can find the line that allows the wheel group to be um, 
to be root equivalent. Yeah, excellent. So that percent wheel says that the group wheel and people who belong to the group wheel um, are allowed to run all commands as though they are root. So the all, all, all there on the, the line basically talks about the uh, person that they executed as, the commands they're allowed to execute, and from where they're allowed to execute those commands. Um, so people in the wheel group could become any user. So they could use sudo with some options to actually run commands as other people. Uh, they're allowed all commands. That's what's in the parentheses there. And the last thing is, uh, from all places. All right, and we can see that there's one other entry in here too, uh, the root user at the towards the top, all right? The root user can also use sudo and uh, run all commands. All right, so I mentioned that this is to control access to administrative tasks and it provides the ability for people to exceed their normal permissions and do these things. But the other thing is, um, Eric, if we take a look at the bottom of var log messages, I think we'll see something else that's interesting. I think it's Varlog messages, maybe not. Maybe it's Varlog secure? Uh, secure sounds right. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Um, so we can see this entry that says that Jim became the root user and ran this command, right? So not only are we granting the permission for this person to exceed their normal um, ability, but we're also logging the tasks that this person did with that extra authority. And that's what the um, allows sudo to be the method that we comply with these security policy requirements, because not only are we controlling access to who can do things as root, but we're also having them do them as the regular person. So we know who did them and we know what they did when they did it, right? Um, so that's the critical path, Eric. Awesome. Uh, so I noticed we've already got a couple of questions in the chat. So we're getting ready to transition to the second half of the show where your questions will be answered. You could become part of the show. Um, but in the deeper dive, we're going to talk about a little bit more about the sudoers file, uh, how you can use it to uh, for specific commands, specific users, or even uh, groups of commands and groups of users. So stay tuned for the second half of the show. Welcome to Into the Terminal 62. Um, so Scott, thank you for taking the reins at, at the last minute here because it decided to drop 25 degrees here in Kansas City and there's snow on the ground. So of course my voice is shot. Um, you know, my lungs just can't take this brutal Kansas City weather, I guess. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't know anything about that. I live uh, in a completely different climate. <laughs> Uh, all right. So um, Nate brought up a question uh, in our chat before we get too far into this that uh, um, that I wanted to surface before we dove in any further. So it was so why would root need sudo? Because in in the sudoers file, we actually saw the same sort of entry for root that we had for the wheel group. I mean, does root need sudo? No. Right. Root can run whatever they want. They're the administrative user. But if you wanted to get some of the more auditing things that we were just talking about, where we could see who ran it and what they ran, that might be a reason why um, Root would, would run sudo. In reality, I think that most people set up a more, um, a more comprehensive sudo configuration. We'll go through some of those examples in a bit. And then they lock the Root account because Root no longer needs to log in. And if they can't log in, then people can't be uh, use the root account to run stuff without um, without accountability, right? Because we aren't able to look and see who was root, right? If you log in directly as root, all it's going to say in the logs is root ran some command, but who was that really? And that's something else that a lot of the security policies will reference is that there should not be shared accounts. And many of them look at root as a shared account, which means that there's no single person that you can tie to running those commands. Um, so if there's some kind of problem, who did it? 
how was it done? Um, so you may be able to answer the how was it done part of it from the auditing, but you can't answer the who did it. And that's uh, that's really important. Um, mostly because like if you if you think you may have been compromised, who in your organization may have had their credentials compromised or their account compromised, right? If they're all logging in as root, who knows? Because they're all doing things as a single user account. Well, and I've, I've worked in companies where the uh, root account was indeed shared, but the ability to SU to root was disallowed. So it would force you to log in as a regular user, and then you'd have to SU to, uh, to root. That, that is a step in the right direction, but it makes it really frustrating from an audit perspective to go in and figure out who broke what. Uh, whereas with sudo, as we saw with the, with the Jim example, you can see that every time Jim used the sudo command, it would list the exact command that Jim ran. Uh, so it makes it much easier <clears throat> instead, of, instead of having to dig through the logs and basically draw up a timeline that says, well, Jim logged in at 4.55, but Mary was also, also switched user to root at 4.59, so who broke the database at 5.02? We, we're not sure. Um, so sudo, um, sudo is, is, is far superior in that, uh, in that regard than, uh, uh, than just su to, uh, to root. Yeah, and there is another technology that we started shipping with Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8. I know that we've talked about it here on Into the Terminal. It continues to be shipped with RHEL 9, and that is session recording, which is implemented through the T-log utility, right? So that actually does a terminal logging. Um, so even if someone was logging in as root, or they're using the SU command and running a whole bunch of stuff, uh, through terminal logging, you'd be able to capture that data and look at it. But you have to organize your... <laughs> Um, your practices and procedures to actually utilize that and have some accountability for reviewing and, and um, validating those log entries and who's doing what. But as I mentioned, uh, I think last episode, we were talking about security policies. You know, auditors will come in and they will have kind of a standard set of things that they're expecting to see for you to comply with the policy. And so while T-Log is offered and I think does a fantastic job, um, they're probably going to push to see sudo in addition, right? So start with sudo, add on t-log for like extra goodness, and I think you'll be uh, be in a really good position for those audits. And because uh, because we both work on Red Hat Enterprise Linux, I, I wanted to surface this last question before we dive back in to the terminal, pun intended. Uh, <clears throat> Eighth Doctor actually asks if the root user is disabled by default. And as JSCAR points out, I'm really excited to brag on RHEL 9. Yes, in RHEL 9, root is disabled by default. Uh, so, so sudo all the things. And to help with that, we actually have some more advanced examples that we can, we can dive into as part of our deeper dive. <clears throat> yeah, so uh, to set up for that, um, we've created some users on our machine and a group for those users, the ops. So Sheldon, Leonard, Penny, they're all members of the ops group. Um, and these are our system administrators that we want to be able to grant more commands and abilities to sudo. So we're going to uh, VI sudoers. Hey, Eric, real quick. Uh, do we ever directly edit the sudoers file in Etsy? You can, but we have this amazing command called VI sudo, uh, which allows you to basically vim into the sudoers file but it does the amazing thing of uh, actually doing syntax checking on sudoers file before you save. Because not that any of us have ever done this. Um, I make a syntax error, make a typo, and all of a sudden when you reboot or change a, a system configuration or something, you now can't do anything to your box and you have to redeploy because you just misspelled a thing. So please do not VI directly into the sudoers file. Please use VI sudo. This has been a public public service announcement from an idiot who used to do exactly that. <laughs> yeah, so loving the like built-in syntax checking before it commits the change to disk <laughs> that allows you to fix problems if you have them. All right, so um, one of the things in our sudoers file uh, is there's an include directive at the very bottom. And I think for our next example, we actually wanted to leverage this, right, Eric? Yes. Um, all right. So 
you'll see this throughout a bunch of different places in Red Hat Enterprise Linux, that there will be a directory in the Etsy directory called something.d. And basically the reason that we do that is so that we can have modular uh, configuration extensions that can be dropped in by an RPM or a configuration file management software or just because we want to keep things separated and have it more organ organized instead of one giant configuration file. Um, so we're seeing that again here as well, so that we're including any sudoers directives from this etsy sudoers.d directory. So you notice that we've actually already got a file in the Etsy sudoers direct, sudoers.d directory, uh, which ties into uh, our lab environment. But why don't we, uh, Scott, why don't we create another uh, another file here <clears throat> and let's give the ops team some, some commands they can run. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> All right, so we're specifying the people who belong to the ops group uh, can do things as all users. And they're going to run a set of commands called services. And Eric has recalled that he needs to define what services is before we can give it, uh, give it to people. Usually helps. <laughs> all right, so this command alias says, when I use the word services, all caps, this is the list of commands I mean, right? So uh, service, check and fig, we'll be able to pass arguments like start, stop, reload, restart, status, enable and disable. All right, so now if we become one of our users like Sheldon, Oh, I learned that lesson from earlier. <laughs> I think this is present on this box. Uh oh. Oh, did you put it in as bin or as bin? Mm, good point. Uh, oh, so. Did it say bin? So instead of running syscontrol from just syscontrol, you have to put user s bin, or sorry, user bin system CTL. Ah, uh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> oh, love it, love it, love it. Um, aha. Oh, well, that might be the problem. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> Oh, you know what it was? Nginx isn't in installed by default. It was HTTPD. So that's what I should have done. Uh, Nginx. Okay, so it is still just... Uh, bin, CTL. Interesting. Oh, oh, oh. Take a look at that. Um... As root on rel. Interesting. In the sudoers file is hashtag uh, include the correct syntax for include. In Japan files. 
Oh, it says right there. The hash does not mean comment. Right. Um, um, I wonder, does the, does include not handle? Since says all equals services. Interesting. Of course, we're just proving Chantanu's point that pseudo or syntax is difficult. PMP, which is why you do it, and then you don't ever <clears throat> touch it again. Right. Command alias. <laughs> What did I leave out? Uh, do we have to say all at the very end? Uh, so maybe you can run it from all places. What is that? Is it just paren? Oh uh, no, it's not in paren. It's uh, it's just all. Okay. Yep. Let's see. Hey, at least now we're getting a syntax error. On the command to allow options. How about how about <laughs> we uh, take out the command alias and instead just like stick those commands in the list? Hey, that sounds like a great idea. Instead of being all fancy, and then we can delete the all from the end because I think that was also the biggest problem. So there you go. Uh, let's see, and we should just be able to do system CTL and just for the sake of moving the show forward uh, should allow us to do anything with system CTL. All right. Hey, there we go. It was a problem with the uh, with the command alias for some reason, which is ironic considering I copy and pasted that, that line directly from the sudoers comments file. Well, let's take a look after the show. We'll update the comments with, <laughs> uh, with a changed example. Well, well, uh, we'll what happens that. when you, when you get fancy, Eric, I didn't think it was too fancy when I copied and pasted the, the example right out of the, right out of the config file. Anyway, um, so now anyone in the ops group will be able to uh, to run system CTL commands um, with any argument. So they'll be able to enable or disable services, start, restart, stop, um, all that kind of thing. And I'm vamping as we try and figure out what the next example was <laughs> after we derailed the entire show. Oh, and by we, so, I mean... So the next example is uh, granting a list of um, commands to a specific user. So we've granted commands to root equivalents, right? Jim was added to the wheel group, which gave them access to all the stuff. Uh, we specifically granted a set of commands to ops group. So you had to belong to ops to be able to run the system CTL command. And we have one other user that we're gonna work with today named Mary, but Mary is going to be managed individually. So um, we're going to specify that Mary has a specific set of commands that she can run, even though she doesn't belong to any special groups. I right, heard she's so, quite um, contrary. <laughs> uh, Mary is going to be able to do things like look at configuration files or logs, maybe make some changes to those. And I think we probably want to use Vim instead of VI. Um, and then the other thing that Mary can do is she can change passwords. Um, but that would mean that Mary could also change Root's password. So the additional piece of syntax that Eric has added in is that exclamation point. And what does that denote, Eric? So uh, that actually denotes that you do, you cannot run the command that follows. So in this case, we've we've got uh, we've got this qualifier here that. Any, any username basically, and then this this comma and uh, exclamation point says uh, that she cannot change uh, Root's password. Yeah, so she can run the password command, but she cannot run the password command on Root. All right, so let's try it out. Uh, 
I learned that lesson. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> oh. oh, we forgot all. Or, or sorry, Mary equals. Yeah, let's try that. Some days you got it, some days you don't, and clearly I don't got it. All right, so I'm going to change Mary's password, and there's a syntax error. Okay. So is there not supposed to be... Oh, maybe a all space? equals? Yep. Because I, I think sudoers kind of ignores uh, spaces, so that should be okay. Of course, I thought I knew how to manage sudo, so clearly I was wrong on multiple accounts. Oh, and we're also learning another valuable lesson, which is, uh, you know, when you're like, yeah, that looks about right. But maybe not. <laughs> maybe you should test it first. Yeah, as Shantanu pointed out, we're, uh, we're, we're doing this on purpose to show you how to troubleshoot. All right, so... Was it the same issue that we had before? All equals, and then it's just a list. All equals, just in case here, let's try that one more time. Oh, that's not what I wanted. So I've got to got a team of highly trained individuals in the background here helping me out. Uh, it's bin password. Oh, good point. Good point. Okay, I think I know what it is. <sighs> Although I did learn something, Eighth Doctor says that you can actually use vi sudo on uh, on uh, some of those files here. Let's try that out. Vi yeah, sudo. Maybe vi sudo will actually tell us what stupid mistake I made. What else you got, Eighth Doctor? <laughs> All right. So pull up pull up uh, the list <coughs> there in uh, sudoers one more time. Because I've been also like monkeying around on my own system. Let's see, so is it just vi sudo? Okay, there we go. User bin more, user bin vim. Okay, let's uh, test something else. Um, one second. All right, so uh, <laughs> let me. me copy and paste something that worked from my other environment. Ah. Hey, Doctor, gotcha. There we go. So, why don't you bring don't it up? Tell, don't tell did. Scott, but he wrote that list. <laughs> 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 so bring it up let's see what it is oh goodness so uh password was misspelled there's one s that would explain it <laughs> and it was a completely accurate error message you're not allowed to run password because the password <laughs> you're allowed to run only has one s eric right 
And that is where your brain sometimes runs far too fast because I skimmed that error message and was like, yeah, I get it. I can't run the command. What's what's wrong? <laughs> oh, we're going to have Eighth Doctor come on the show and he's, he's going to do this for a while. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we could do that. Uh, also, we said that Mary was going to look at log files. So we granted her access to more. So maybe if we do a more, a sudo more on varlog secure, right? A file that normal people don't usually have access to. Right, there we go, good. And so and then, notice notice that it didn't ask me for a password. So sudo actually has a timeout. I forget how long it is, but when you put in your password, it actually sets a timeout that you don't have to re-enter your password for a couple of minutes. So it, it actually yeah. let us run more without asking for our password again. <laughs> Uh, and then the other thing that we can do is we can edit something. So, uh, Eric, you said that we have HTTPD on the list. We should. <laughs> All right. So let's do a sudo vi on um, uh, Etsy HTTPD conf HTTPD.conf. Conf. Uh, then HT, yep, there you go. HTTP. All right, so here we go. We're editing this file, right? This is something else that normal people aren't able to do. Oops. All right, but um, there's something that we did that was naughty. <laughs> Not test so our demo out, beforehand? No, no, no. I've, well, well, we'll find out shortly. Um, <laughs> So, Eric, if you do a colon exclamation point bin bash from here in VI, slash. Oh, bash. yeah. Oop, yep. Yep. Hey, that looks like a root shell. And once you run a command like, uh, I don't know, user add Joe. Okay, there you go. And then let's exit. And then. Let's go back into VI and then let's exit again. All right. And let's do a tail on varlog secure. And we may need to sudo that. And it would be a sudo. Oh, you know, she didn't have access to tail. <laughs> so we're going to have to be, uh, we're going to have to be root anyway. So let's take a look at uh, the tail on varlog secure. Okay, so you can see that what happened was uh, Mary, um, where is it? About the middle there, ran VI. Oh, but then there's some weird stuff that happens. A new group gets created, a new user gets created. But where's the command and who ran it? Not listed. All right, so some commands like VI... Uh, have the ability to execute additional programs from them. And that's not good because that kind of breaks our auditability, right? Here's Mary running amok, doing stuff as root, not getting logged on our uh, Varlog Secure. That's not good. So there's a sudoers argument that we can pass to keep that from happening. So Eric, do you want to go ahead and uh, add the uh, the special configuration in there to keep it from happening. I'm almost afraid to at this point. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? Uh, Everything. So it's just a no exec colon space uh, in front of the command list. Mary equals. Yep. Oh, so I think... no exec colon. Okay. There you go. So that should do it. If, if my syntax is correct. And now if we do a bin bash from here, an exclamation point bin bash. Can no longer invoke that subshell from within VI. Um, turns out you could do something similar for more and less as well. So even though it seems like really innocuous to give somebody access to edit a file by giving them VI or allowing someone to look at something by giving them the less or more command, um, you're also giving the ability to shell out from that utility that's running as root 
to then do more things as root. Uh, so this no exec is really, really helpful um, for maintaining that auditability. All right, what do we have in terms of uh, questions from the audience, Eric? Or were they just making fun of us at this point? I think mostly making fun of us and that Naughty Scotty should be a sticker. And, and uh, Eighth Doctor invoked Nano, so you know I think we got to kick him out, kick him out of the chat. At least he didn't say Joe. And so I don't really see anything in uh, sort of our uh, sort of our Q and A Q. Uh, thank you to Nate and Rick who are hanging out in the chat and also kind of keeping an eye on questions here. Um, there was some discussion uh, a little bit above. I, I don't see it here in the chat, but uh, um, you can actually disable sudo-i and sudo-s uh, by using uh, using an exclamation point. <coughs> um, so I don't know if there's more you want to say on that, uh, Scott, there in, uh, in the green room. It would work. It would work similarly to uh, to what we saw with the password command, where we made it so that Mary couldn't change Root's password. Same thing. So you're allowing for, uh, or I should say, negating the ability to run sudo with specific arguments by um, prefacing them with that exclamation point, the, the not um, definition. All right. With that, I'm trying to think if there's some way I can edit this down or or somehow salvage it. Maybe Scott and I can just re-record this later. <laughs> just, we'll just cut from the critical path on. Like, not important. <laughs> right. Well, that, that's what happens when two experienced systems administrators go, it's 30 minutes till showtime. All those commands look right. We'll go with it. <laughs> Hypos. Man. Uh, it's every time. Right. All right, folks. Well, hopefully the... Uh, Hopefully the conversation was, was enlightening and this was lighthearted and entertaining for a Friday. Uh, so uh, thank you for joining us and uh, being part of the circus today. Uh, be sure to like this episode so we know what topics resonate with you and subscribe so you can get notified whenever we publish new videos, which hopefully don't blow up like this one did. Join us next week <laughs> as we cover a similar topic on user account management. We'll give that one a little bit more attention because apparently we don't remember how to edit and manage sudo permissions. Um, you can also catch us next week live on RHEL Presents. We'll be talking about the enable sysadmin community. Speaking of enable sysadmin, if you haven't already, you can join us over on Discord. There is a QR code right up there. Just scan that QR code or uh, there'll be a link in the show notes for you to join us on uh, Discord. Enable sysadmin as a community within, uh, within Red Hat uh, for authors and systems administrators uh, and whatnot to join us. And the jokes just keep scrolling in the chat. I'm just going to wrap this up and call it a day. Uh, so join us as, as we interview Tyler, the community manager for Enable Sysadmin. Figure out how you can uh, be a part of that community as well as uh, how you can... Um, how you can uh, uh, contribute. Uh, you can actually write articles. So join us on Wednesday. Next Friday, we'll talk about user account management. Until then, on, on behalf of myself and Scott McBrien and all of those uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux engineers that are now greatly ashamed of us, thank you for joining us, and we will see you next week.